transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords eternally retold. What's good YouTube, it's your host Axel Rose, the Shogun with the slogan and you are now watching MVP Magazine. And yes people, Soul Calibur 6 has finally returned. It's been a long time since Soul Calibur 5, way back in 2012, stroke 2013 and it's time to see, has the series matured with the times or is it time for the series to be left in the dust? Now Soul Calibur is a one-on-one -on -one versus fighting game from Namco and even though this says Soul Calibur 6, it's actually the seventh one in the franchise. The series started off back in 95 with a little title called Soul Edge. And as times matured, so has the series with Bandai Namco adding many new features to Soul Calibur as time went on. But how many of these new features actually work with the gameplay? Well, at its core, Soul Calibur is still a very fun game. The Soul Calibur series trademark fast and frantic, yet deep and sometimes infuriating gameplay remains intact and that is definitely a good thing. If you've been a long time fan of the franchise, as soon as you pop this in your console, you will feel right at home. Now, as stated before, the gameplay is as fluid and most importantly, as fun as ever. Me personally, I would have really liked to see Namco do just that little bit extra to tighten up the gameplay overall so players don't get rewarded for doing as cheap tactics as we see online or in certain tournaments. The fact that there's such a deep system that can be negated by cheap tactics kind of takes away from the overall fun. Now one of the really interesting things about Soul Calibur is that the overall fun of the game doesn't just lie in its combat. The character creation is awesome and that is an understatement. It seems that Bandai Namco have taken all the great work they did with Soul Calibur 4 and just taken it to the next level. And the level of depth and content in this mode here, whew, it's almost worth the price of admission alone. Now, I have a big imagination myself and I love making my own characters and the level of detail you can go to creating little ornaments or just changing up their weapons, it just borders on kind of borderline obsessive. But in the wide world of online fighting, when you really want to personalize your own character and get your own custom look, you know, <laughs> It's just really important. I mean, look, I've got spikes coming out of my guy's back. I mean, it's just really awesome. And no matter how angry I get online, occasionally the character creation just brings that zen like experience that no other fighting game has managed to grasp yet. And even though most of the stuff comes directly from Soul Calibur 4, just the added way you can actually flip it and just do more things than before, just actually just... I really have to take my hats off to Bandai Namco and commend them for probably the most deepest and involving character creation I've seen in video games, period. So yeah, very good. They definitely brought their A game as regards the character creation and being that I'm a little bit of a character creation ho, yeah, <laughs> this definitely works on my good side. I mean, come on, look, check it out. I'm even like, you know, customizing the handle of my blade, which probably no one will ever see unless they watch this video. Yeah. <laughs> Little do many gamers actually know, Soul Calibur, or should I say Soul Edge, was actually the first game to really set the standard for fighting game stories 
way back in 95, 96 when it released on the PlayStation. Now, this game had multiple endings, a true mixed path for you to travel with all your characters, and it was awesome. Now, Soul Calibur 6 does quite a good job keeping up the status quo as far as the series has gone. It does have beautiful art in the stories and some really cool cutscenes, even though they are few and far between. One of the things that I definitely have to commend Namco for is actually making a separate campaign, especially for your custom character, as well as one that works for the main cast. And we're in an era where certain companies are releasing fighting games without an arcade mode, <clears throat> Capcom, I'm looking at you, we can definitely appreciate all the stuff that, you know, Namco have done. But that being said, most of the game is told with, you know, static pictures and random voiceovers. And sometimes you really want to see the action. And, you know, it does kind of come off. Ling Shen Su Temple was a famous martial arts school in the far reaches of China. It was there Killick learned to master the staff after he was abandoned as a child. Killick ate and slept with the other students and began his training at a... BORING! Okay, so maybe still anime screens are your thing and that is totally fine. The art is great and I love anime too. But sometimes, just, just, just sometimes, the way the story is conveyed really takes away from the overall drama and action of what is actually going on and it will lead you to just pressing the skip button because the story kind of feels like it has no consequences I mean sorry events which are happening in a story can feel like they have no consequence I, I, I mean just just hey 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 people just just check out what I mean by this scene just just watch let's go kill or be killed Get a hold of yourself, Shanglin. Shanglin. Um, yeah. Wouldn't you have liked to see what exactly happened in that exchange as well? Yeah, me too. Especially since the next scene is this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what, what? Yeah, um, Namco, you have definitely got some work to do on your storytelling there, bud. Yeah, all you guys. And if we're on the case of being honest, the main new addition to Soul Calibur 6, the Reversal Edge, yeah, definitely not a big fan of that. Basically, what Reversal Edge is, is a one move beats all counter which throws you and your opponent into a rock, paper, scissors battle, which makes kind of no sense to tell the truth. Either you or your opponent could come out on top, there's no exact way to tell how or who's gonna win, and it definitely adds a very random element to most fights. And in a game where there's things like ring outs, huge damaging combos, you really don't need any more random encounters, do you? Especially when this definitely takes away from mix-ups once you've knocked your opponent down and you can't even throw people out of this and it takes up multiple hits unlike the focus attack from Street Fighter which takes up two so there is definitely an element of overall scrubby and cheapness to this move now something like this could be very cool for tournaments or tight spots when you're really down on your luck but overall the move just comes across feeling rather cheap. Birdies! Either way, Soul Calibur 6 definitely lives up to the legacy of the franchise. Even though its core components might not be as deep or as tight as I would like them, it definitely still is fun and the character creation is definitely worth the price of admission and especially because it has a whole load of new single player content I definitely can't sneeze at that and I have to respect it. One of the things I definitely do not approve of though is them locking characters which are on the disc behind a paywall. 
Capcom, man. You are, you, you're inspiring these guys in the wrong way. And the fact that fan favorites like Huang, Hyung Sung Kyung, and others have not made it and will probably be in there as DLC when they should have been part of the base roster is definitely something that I have to not commend the game for. But apart from that, it's a really fun game with cool graphics and I definitely have to give this game a strong 4 out of 5. So yeah, let me know what you think of the video and the review. Have you got Soul Calibur? If you want to be playing this with me on the online struggle, leave a like and subscribe and all of that great stuff. Alright, have a nice day. Peace.